What up, you nerds? Fallout here, and today I'm giving you my guide to the new Beyond Light Warlock subclass, the Shadebinder. The Shadebinder has a lot of good things going for it. I'm really glad it's the first class I started playing in the new expansion. If there's a particular part about the subclass you want to learn about right away, check out the timestamps below. If I end up making additional guides on the other classes, for example, we're probably going to repeat a lot of the grenade info verbatim since all the new grenades are exactly the same. So go ahead and skip over that part if you want. All right, we're gonna look at everything the Shade Binder comes with, but let's start with a general overview. The Shade Binder does three things incredibly well. Thing number one, movement denial. The Shade Binder Warlock loves nothing more than freezing enemies in place. Yeah, every new subclass can do that, but the Shadebinder seems pretty damn good at getting the job done. Thing number two is crowd control. That's on the PvE side of things. While Chaos Reach and Well of Radiance might be great at handling DPS on a big boss, the Shadebinder can reach Stormcaller levels of shutting down large groups of low-level enemies without any problem. Thing number three is being a god-tier roaming super killer in PvP. We're gonna get to that a little bit later, but please trust me when I tell you that the Shadebinder laughs at pretty much every roaming super in PvP. If any or all of that sounds really good to you, I highly recommend playing a Shadebinder. All right, part number one, grenades. There are three of them to cover, and let's start off with the Glacier Grenade, your very first nade option. Throw it, create a wall of ice that lasts for about 15 seconds. Kind of a fairly long time. Nice if you want to prevent an enemy from chasing you, keeping guardians off of power ammo or off of the cap point. Yada yada. Remember though, you can shoot and destroy the glacier walls at any time, and so can your enemies. Because the glacier grenade can create platforms of ice, remember you can use them to jump, meaning if you want to catch some enemies off guard, you can always throw one at a wall, then really take them by surprise from way high up in the air. Also, throwing a glacier nade directly down at your own feet can be a very quick way to pop yourself up in the air. Maybe if you want to hit the enemy with a rocket launcher or something. Throwing a glacier nade directly at an enemy will freeze them if they get caught up in the ice wall. If you shoot and break an ice wall that either contains an enemy or is simply near an enemy, the shattering of that ice wall will cause splash damage, about 84 damage at maximum. Also, if frozen, remember you can break out of being frozen, but you will damage yourself by doing so. Despite taking damage when breaking out of being frozen, you can apparently never kill yourself by defreezing. You'll be left with minimal health each and every time, if you're already weak. Use the Glacier Nade if you want to get creative with both approaching enemies from the air or platforming where enemies won't expect you and area denial. Next up, we have the Duskfield Grenade, and holy hell, do I love the Duskfield Grenade. It doesn't last as long as the Glacier Nade, only about seven seconds total duration. It also doesn't do a ton of damage. Even a direct hit on your enemy won't even come close to breaking their shield. What the Duskfield Grenade does do, though, is both disorient and slow down your enemy a ton. Any enemy in a Duskfield zone who doesn't leave the area of effect within a three second window is going to become frozen. Remember, freezing people does work in PvP, and being frozen will pretty much translate to a death sentence as you become a free target. Even if your target knows beforehand that they're about to get hit with a Duskfield grenade, it's still really hard to get out without getting frozen. Hey hunters, guess what? That dusk field takes away your ability to hunter dodge. Have fun with that. Icarus Dash Warlocks though, can get out with using Icarus Dash. Go figure. The best part though of the dusk field grenade is the suck factor. Throwing a grenade even remotely near an enemy will literally suck them into the dead center of the vortex. We measured if you're within nine meters of the grenade detonating on the floor, get ready to get sucked. Once the initial detonation is over though, you're free to try to get the hell out, but that initial suck factor is wild. Have an enemy hiding from you around a corner? Nope, get sucked, bro. No enemy wants to play with your wither horde dead zone? Nah, get sucked, bro. All kidding aside, probably a top tier nade for sure. Go have fun figuring out great weapon combos with the Dusk Field Grenade. The final new grenade is the Cold Snap Grenade. It's essentially an icy version of the Arc Bolt. Throw it on the ground and it shoots a stream of ice along the floor directly at the nearest target. If it hits them, guess what? They are frozen. Yeah, they'll take 20 damage too, but the insta-freezing the target is really the entire point of the Cold Snap. Much like the Arc 
Dark Bolt, the Cold Snap can target multiple enemies one after another, provided each new target is close by to the one who just got tagged. The tracking is also pretty aggressive, to the point where I was actually kind of impressed yet horrified. The ice can even climb walls and slink around corners while attempting to find a new target. It isn't unescapable though, kind of like the Arc Bolt grenade, a hunter dodge will break the tracking no problem. Also, really quickly jumping up and away from the cold snap seems to get you out of harm's way. That being said, the cold snap is still a hella strong grenade option in both PvE and PvP. All right, now we're gonna cover the Warlock melee ability, Penumbral Blast. Penumbral Blast, weird name, is a ranged melee ability, much like an icy version of Celestial Fire. Hitting melee will launch one frozen orb in a straight line. If it hits an enemy, that enemy will be immediately frozen. Yeah, they'll also take damage, 80 from the splash and an extra 11 for a direct impact, but getting frozen is by far the most important part of the ability. You should also know that the Penumbral Blast shard has splash damage, meaning that if you have multiple guardians bunched up together, and you blast the floor in front of them, if they're within two or three meters of the blast, they will all be frozen. Got an enemy that you know is camping around a corner, but you just can't see him with your gun. Boop, splash damage, get frozen. Because the splash damage is so reliable, I really recommend trying to use Penumbral kind of like a rocket or grenade launcher like Mountaintop, i.e. use it from the air and fire down at a target. That way, if you don't get a direct hit, eh, maybe you'll hit the floor, get splash damage. Keep in mind, Penumbral does not have infinite range, one of its very few downsides. It'll only travel for about 30 meters before vanishing into thin air. Despite what you may have heard, Penumbral has very slight tracking, but it's only really noticeable at longer ranges. Meaning if you fire from just the right distance away, the blast will slightly curve a little bit towards the target. In case you were wondering, yeah, like other abilities that can freeze targets, Penumbral can and will freeze enemies in their roaming supers. I have done this many times in ranked PvP already with very minimal effort, and it's funny each and every time. Freeze target, swap to any hard-hitting special weapon, boom, dead. If you want a very basic yet very effective Shadebinder build to try out in PvP, try 100 Strength paired together with the Claws of Ahamkara for two melee charges, paired together with the Monte Carlo Auto Rifle if you really want a first-class ticket to hell. Now let's talk about the super, Winter's Wrath. Here's a general idea of how it works. You pop your super and you enter third-person roaming mode. Use primary fire to shoot out a volley of four orbs. If any of those frozen orbs make contact with a target, they will take damage and immediately become frozen. Once frozen, use your alternate fire to send out a Gandalf you shall not pass looking shockwave in the air. Any frozen enemy will take insane damage from that shockwave and die. That's really, so far, the only way that super is meant to be used. If you try only to repeatedly spam frozen orbs, you're actually not gonna do a lot of damage. The orbs really only serve to freeze people, and if you only try to repeatedly spam the you shall not pass shockwave, you also will not do a whole lot of damage. In fact, your enemies will likely shoot and kill you. The combo is freeze with the orbs, finish with the shockwave. Freeze, then finish, the one-two combo. The four orbs from your primary fire track very aggressively, and like Penumbral, also have splash damage. Using Winter's Wrath in the air is pretty awesome because you float a lot, and using the orb attack while in the air keeps you elevated for a little bit longer. You can essentially rain death from above for a good long while. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the Shadebinder is a top tier anti-roaming super class, and not just because of Penumbral Melee, Winter's Wrath makes other roaming supers look like a joke. You can freeze any enemy super with your primary orb attack. Spectral Blade, nah, frozen immediately, and one shot by the follow-up, you shall not pass. Bottom Tree Arc Staff, nah, frozen immediately, and then one shot. Mid Tree Sentinel Titan with Banner Shield, <laughs> no, frozen immediately, everybody dies. Code of the Mother Missile frozen mid-air and one shot with you shall not pass. Insane. Now, of course, you're thinking, well, hey, Fallout, mid-tree arc staff, they can reflect anything. True, hitting a spinny boy arc staff dead on with your orb attack will have it bounce back at you, and yeah, that's no good. But remember, splash damage. If you shoot the orbs around the hunter's feet, 
to try and get a splash hit, boom, frozen follow-up one-shot Dead Hunter. Or if you think the splash damage is too risky of a play, guess what else you can do? Wait out the Arc Staff, because oh, I forgot to mention, if you pop your Winter's Wrath and don't do anything, i.e. spam attacks, the super will last for 30 seconds. I'm not making that number up, meaning that you can float up in the air and let that little hunter spin, spin, spin all he wants until his super runs out and boom, now you freeze him. Because Winter's Wrath can last up to 30 seconds, it becomes the ultimate anti-super. Are you in comp? And someone popped Spec Blade, Arc Staff, Fist of Havoc. Cool, pop Winter's Wrath. If the enemy super charges you, they will die. If they get scared and wait, well, good. You wait for their super to die out, and then you swoop in and clean them up. You literally have 30 seconds. You can outweigh any other roaming super or easily shut them down if they charge you. For the record, when fighting a bubble titan, don't spam orbs on the bubble from the outside. You won't break it. You need to go into the bubble to freeze the titan, then shockwave for the one-shot kill. Easy, just make sure you don't get suppressed. Final thing to note, the you shall not pass shockwave goes much further than you think, 25 meters, meaning you don't need to worry too much about getting right up next to your frozen target to activate the shockwave. You can be relatively far away. The only real downside of Winter's Wrath is the movement. If you're used to playing top tree Dawnblade like a lot of other warlock mains out there, you're gonna feel pretty slow in comparison. You can float faster than other players can run, but they're still gonna make your life difficult by running. And there you have it, Shadebinder is a crowd controlling, put you in your placing, super eating machine. Now I know we're about to get a whole wide world of new stuff you can use to further customize your guardian via aspects and fragments. I'm not including those in this guide because this is supposed to be a very ground level guide on using the subclass. Aspects and fragments probably deserve their own video. Let me know what class you want me to do a guide on next down in the comment section. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to like this video free to do and helps me out a bunch. Same thing with clicking subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you're enjoying Beyond Light and I will see you next time.